What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield of VGC 2021 video. Now today, I want to make a video discussing Tapu Koko's place in the format and why I think it's overlooked in certain situations. This isn't going to be the most organized video, I do have some points I want to hit, however I might, you know, go on a tangent here and there. So yeah, if you guys enjoy this at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like and hit subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you guys daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And do me a favor, comment down below, do you think Tapu Koko has a place in this format? Have you used it? Let me know. I want to know what you guys think about it. But with that, let's go ahead and get into it. So, Tapu Koko and Regieleki, they're similar in certain ways, but they're also very different in certain ways. Now, before I can really talk about Tapu Koko's place in the format, I should really cover Regieleki, which is its main competition and the most common electric type in the format, hands down. It is literally the fifth most used Pokemon overall and the most common electric type. So, what does it do? Well, Regieleki is a pure electric type with a brand new ability called Transistor, which essentially gives whichever attack stat it's using a 50% boost when it's using an electric move. And it is the most fast Pokemon ever. It is 200 base speed. The other stats are pretty underwhelming though. 80 HP, 100 attack, 50 defense, 100 special attack, and 50 special defense. Now that 80 HP is not offsetting those 50 defenses by very much. However, because you're so naturally fast, you hardly need to invest anything into your speed, allowing those EVs to be allocated into your defensive stats, allowing this thing to be deceptively bulky. Now, while it is deceptively bulky behind, you know, fast light screen, fast reflect, there are certain situations where it just cannot stand up to big threats. Like Landris, it's not going to take a max quake. Um, Glacier, it's not going to comfortably take a max hailstorm. You get the point. So, Regieleki has seen itself mostly as a supported Pokemon. Being so absurdly fast means that it can spam Electroweb, decreasing the opponent's uh, speed stat before they're able to attack, and with the dynamic speed mechanics in this game, it will allow your own teammates to outspeed these faster Pokemon because of the Electroweb. It's also recently taken a bit more of an offensive presence in the format, with some people switching over to Choice Specs, because Transistor and Choice Specs stack together in a ridiculous way. It just makes Volt Switch do absurd amounts of damage, it makes Electroweb a legitimately scary move to switch in on, even though it's more of a supportive move, and Thunderbolt does so, so much damage. The only issue with Regieleki in an offensive sense is the lack of coverage. Hyper Beam and Ancient Power are pretty much your only two special coverage moves you could be running comfortably. Actually, I think that's literally the only two special coverage moves. Um, but yeah, it's it's very difficult to actually uh, consistently knock out things that are immune to electric moves with Regieleki. So I personally fall into the camp that offensive Regieleki, while scary, is very inconsistent. So yeah, those are the two things that it really does. It's either extremely offensive or very, very supportive. So where does Tapu Koko fall into all this? Well, Tapu Koko is an electric fairy type with the ability Electric Surge, which summons Electric Terrain, as most of you know. It has 70 HP, 115 attack, 85 defense, 95 special attack, 75 special defense, and 130 speed. It's significantly slower than Regieleki, however, 130 speed is significantly faster than most of the format, falling in between Dragapult and pretty much everything else. So, Tapu Koko is bulkier than Regieleki, clearly, just based off of the stats. And while Regieleki can allocate much more of its bulk, uh, or much more of its EVs into its bulk, Tapu Koko will always be bulkier. And here's an example calc for you guys to understand that. If we actually look at something that hits both of them for neutral and is a relatively strong move, Arcanine, let's just go with an offensive Arcanine. This is adamant max attack. Arcanine's Flare Blitz will be doing 81.9% maximum to this dual screens Tapu Koko set where the most common dual screens Regieleki set will actually be taking, uh, where is it? Will actually be taking 96% maximum. Nearly a KO, if they get a burn, you're pretty much gone. So that's a really big thing between them. Tapu Koko, even though you can't invest as much into its bulk, will still be bulkier and does provide a lot of things that Regieleki can't to a team. Mainly, it's fairy typing. Now, if we look at the most commonly used Pokemon in the format, uh, you can see that Tapu Fini is the second most common Pokemon in the format and the most common fairy type, not even by like a little bit, but literally pretty much like just the fairy type of the format. Grimmsnarl makes an appearance on a lot of teams. However, it's, you know, not as much of a fairy as it is like a dark type and a prankster support Pokemon. When it comes to other fairy types, you have to scroll quite a long time before you reach anything and you end up hitting things like Clefairy, Whimsicott, and Togekiss. And you don't really see all of them 
too often. You do see them, but not, you know, as often as you see Tapu Fini. So why do I think this is actually an issue for a lot of teams? Well, when you look at some oppressively strong Pokemon in the format, like Urshifu, uh, it was not too long ago, Urshifu was the most common Pokemon in the format, and it liked to run Choice Band Wicked Blow to do insane amounts of damage to your team. Now, it is a dark and fighting type with a base 130 attack stat that likes to lock itself into uh, either Close Combat or Wicked Blow. Both moves do about the same amount of damage, and there aren't many Pokemon that can actually switch in on both of them. In case, you know, the opponent makes a prediction, uh, it is rare for a Pokemon to be able to... Like, a Pokemon that switches in on Wicked Blow comfortably cannot usually switch in on Close Combat comfortably, and vice versa. Incineroar is a prime example about this. You're going to want to switch in Incineroar to be able to eat that Wicked Blow. However, if they decide to go for Choice Band Close Combat, you've lost your Incineroar. And that isn't a hard prediction to make. There are a lot of situations where a smart Urshifu player will go for the Close Combat, or will go for the Close Combat into the Incineroar, despite uh, the Incineroar expecting a Wicked Blow. Tapu Fini is the most reliable switch into this Pokemon because it's able to resist both of those stabs with only its very typing. And it's an extremely bulky Pokemon that can threaten to KO back. Glacier does not like either of these moves, Rillaboom does not like either of these moves, Regieleki really doesn't like either of these moves because of its low defenses and the fact that Wicked Blow cuts through screens, Urshifu itself doesn't like close combat, Porygon doesn't like close combat, Landorus doesn't like Wicked Blow because it ignores the Intimidate, and the list goes on. There are some Pokemon that can switch in on it, but they're very, very rare. One of these Pokemon that can switch in on it that I think is extremely underutilized is Tapu Koko itself. If we actually look at the damage that a Choice Band Rillaboom, uh, Rillaboom, a Choice Band Urshifu will do to Tapu Koko, it's actually pretty negligible. So let me pull up this Tapu Koko set. Tapu Koko dual screens. There he is. And we give this Urshifu a Choice Band. We can see that Urshifu is going to be doing 62% maximum to this Tapu Koko with Choice Band Wicked Blow, its strongest option versus it. And because Tapu Koko is very fast and has an option to one-shot Urshifu, in this situation the Urshifu would likely either have to switch or if that isn't an option, go for a Sucker Punch, meaning that it's only going to be doing 36% maximum to Tapu Koko and that is, that's if screens aren't even up. If screens are up, he's not doing like anything, he's doing 25% maximum pretty much. Tapu Koko is able to one-shot the Urshifu, done deal, it's fine. Now. You might be saying, well, yeah, Regieleki can also do this. Uh, the only issue is if the Urshifu is Focus Sash. Well, yeah, that, that's a pretty big if. If it's Choice Banded Urshifu, you're going to be taking a lot from Sucker Punch, especially if you're not invested as much into bulk. If you're more of an offensive Regieleki, you're going to be one shot by Sucker Punch uh, from Choice Band Urshifu. And if it's Focus Sash Urshifu, you're going to get one shot by Wicked Blow regardless of your screens. Tapu Koko doesn't have to make that risk. And while I don't think that Tapu Koko is objectively better than Regieleki, I think the I think that for most teams, Regieleki is going to be better. Uh, with the format getting progressively bulkier, as you can see, Urshifu's dropped down and Cinderella's gone up. The format is shifting more towards a bulky, um, what's it called? A bulky identity. Uh, you're going to see a lot more teams opt to run a safer Pokemon. And I think that Tapu Koko is somewhat a safer Pokemon. If we look at the team I brought to Players Cup 2, uh, I, went, I went pretty deep into the tournament, to be honest, deeper than I expected. I ran a Galarian Moltres team, and signed to note, Tapu Koko is a Pokemon that can switch in on both stabs from Weakness Policy Galarian Moltres and eat them pretty comfortably. Uh, even with plus two, it's able to take those hits. Uh, if we look at this team that I ran, I ran a Tapu Koko in place of Regieleki. And the main reason is because I knew that Urshifu was going to be a problem for the team if I didn't end up running something to check it reliably. The reason is because I didn't want to lose outright to Glacier, I ended up running an Alola Marek, which is admittedly a pretty tech Pokemon. I ended up running this set, which made my team much weaker to Urshifu. Rather than just saying, I'll take the Urshifu L, like just, you know, not worry about the Urshifu team and just try to play around it with Tapu Fini. The issue with this mindset is that Tapu Fini, while it can switch in on the hit, a Choice Band Urshifu or even a regular Urshifu can slowly wear down your Tapu Fini by having you consistently having to switch in on the move. Like a Wicked Blow doesn't do an insane amount of damage to you, but it's still from like a Choice Band Urshifu doing like 30%, if not more. Sometimes I've seen these things do like 40% to Tapu Fini. Your Tapu Fini can't switch in on that over and over again and then also be your Dynamax target or you know, just expect to take out the Urshifu. There are many things that can slowly chip down a Tapu Fini and eventually make it just sort of a, like a, a gone piece on your team, a piece that doesn't really bring anything to the table. 
By splitting up the load between Tapu Fini and Tapu Coco, you actually get a lot more elbow room for this sort of thing. You can you get a lot more wiggle room, I guess. Tapu Coco over Regilaki meant that this team didn't have to ever worry about Urshifu. I never lost to an Urshifu team. At least I don't think so. Uh, Galarian Moltres, it doesn't want to take a close combat from Urshifu if it's Choice Band Urshifu. Tapu Coco could always come in on that and take like no damage. Kartana did not like Choice Band Urshifu or Sash Urshifu for that fact. Tapu Coco could always come in or Tapu Fini. Meruak Alola, weak to Urshifu. Tapu Coco or Tapu Fini always comes in. Landorus does not want to take a Choice Band Wicked Blow. Either one of these always comes in. If my Tapu Fini was an important piece for the end game and I didn't want to have it take too much chip damage, I could bring in the other fairy type. Now, granted, this did make my team slightly worse against things like Nihiligo, which, while it wasn't the most common Pokemon at the time, you did see it occasionally. My team had enough answers for these poison types that it wasn't really an issue. Kartana can switch in on a poison move, Landers can switch in on a poison move, Rara can switch in on a poison move. It was pretty much a non-issue, and I think this is the sort of team that Tapu Koko should be considered on. Now, once again, I will say that Regieleki is going to be better on certain teams, and we have seen Regieleki pull its weight and honestly deserve its spot at the top of the format, but I think that this is something that a lot of people don't take into consideration, the type synergy and how weak you are to one of the top Pokemon in the format. Tapu Koko is pretty much just a safer Regieleki, albeit with much less speed uh, and also much less offensive potential. Electric Surge does boost your special or your um, electric moves by 30%, but it's not really as much as Transistor would boost the damage output. There is another thing that Tapu Koko can actually do better than Regieleki, and I want to I want to leave this for the end of the video because I don't think it's, it's as much of a factor. But Taunt is such a huge thing for Tapu Koko that Regieleki can't have. Let's say that you're leading off your Regieleki team uh, with like. Regieleki and Moltres, and your game plan is I'm going to set up screens and I'm going to sweep them with Weakness Palsy Moltres. Well, Moltres doesn't really like to run Taunt because it wants to run Roost or, you know, sometimes Roost. It wants to run uh, Protect, it wants to run Dual Stab, and it wants to run Nasty Pot a lot of the time. Some people don't run Nasty Pot, some people will run Taunt, but I do think that Nasty Pot is a pretty big part of the Moltres game plan. Tapu Koko, instead of your Regieleki, isn't a bad idea in this situation because not only does it give you a comfortable switch into Choice Band Urshifu and also threaten it on lead, but it will make it so you can go for Taunt versus Trick Room Pokemon on lead while still being able to provide the dual screen support. Like if I didn't want to run uh, Dazzling Beam on this, if I if I decided, hey, I just want to run like a full support Tapu Koko with the option to Thunderbolt, I could honestly switch out for Taunt and I did actually have that on an earlier version of the team, however, I didn't feel comfortable using it later on. Tapu Koko simply having access to Taunt to stuff Trick Room teams is really, really big. It's also good for stuffing uh, certain Tailwind setters that don't actually use Prankster, and having access to Taunt on a non-Prankster Pokemon that is this fast is really big for stopping things like Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl is Dark and Prankster, which is such an amazing combination. It's able to get up screens and not be taunted by the most common taunt users in the format, which are Opposing Grimmsnarl, Whimsicott, and uh, Tornadus. Occasionally you'll see Taunt and Cinnaroo, and it's such a good, you know, taunt user, but you can honestly fit it onto your Tapu Koko just as easily. So yeah, uh, these are the main points I wanted to bring up. I want you to, to tell me what you think about Tapu Koko in the comment section down below. Do you see a reason to use Tapu Koko on some of your other teams? Will you adjust your teams to maybe try out Tapu Koko? Let me know in the comment section. I really appreciate your feedback on the channel and all the support you've been giving me lately. Do me a favor, if you enjoyed, leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.